So I'm gonna show you the basic steps for gift wrapping so that you feel really comfortable putting that paper over your box. So right here, I have some gift wrap and I just purchased this at the grocery store and it's actually fairly inexpensive gift wrap, but it's pretty. So I always look for those pretty papers. They don't need to be really expensive. Just make sure that they are your taste. And then I have scissors and some tape here. And this is the tape that is specific for gift wrapping so it's not glossy. You can see how I've matched everything. The color palette looks really pretty with the green and the gray matches the paper and then the brown actually fits in as well. And I love that look from start to finish all the way inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and close my box. And this is how I measure my paper when I cut it out to get ready for wrap. Some people will actually say to go about halfway down the sides when you're cutting the width. I don't actually do that. I would go all the way plus a little extra and I'll show you why. It just gives a cleaner finish. And then as far as the length, I always do at least three widths wide and even a little extra is fine too. So then I'll turn my box over in the center and I'll pull my paper all the way to the edge. Now at this point, you can go ahead and put a piece of tape there. Sometimes I like to save my boxes and I don't want the box to rip, although this tape is pretty good at coming off. So I'll go ahead and just put a tiny bit of tape right there to hold it. And I'm gonna turn this around so you can see what I'm doing. I'm pushing my box towards the corner there, so you want it to be really tight. And then I'll use my fingers to crease. Do that the same on the bottom, and then I'll just roll my box. And I'll crease it again, and crease it again. And you can see the paper's wrapping right back around. Now I'm gonna show you a trick on the next video on how to make this seamless, but for this one, I'll show you how I will just flip it right back on itself. And then I have an easy seam that's really finished. I don't like to do raw edges, so this makes a really nice finished seam. Put some tape on that, and then we have the ends. Now you can see they're not really even. They're a little off, but that doesn't matter. First thing I'll do is I'll press. I'm The face of the box is down and the bottom is up. And I'm gonna press the top of the paper down on both sides just to get that started. Then I'll take each of the corners. And it's important that you have a nice flat surface to do this. And I'll press the corners all the way in. And all you do is just really feel it. Everything needs to be very flat. I'll do that on this side as well. So both sides you just slide your fingers in so that you press the paper right against the edge of the box and then get those corners really. Now, I, I just made a mistake here. I actually was pressing this one. I don't wanna do that until I turn the box over because it's best if you press it against the table. So I'll turn it over and then press, push and press on each side. So push and press. Now this seems like a lot, but once you get going, it becomes nothing and you can do it while you're you know, watching TV or doing something else. Now I turn the box back over so the face is down and I'll press that back down again. And you can see I have quite a bit of overhang there. You can press it into the table so you can get a crease. And just so you don't get the extra bulk, I'll trim that off. This will all be hidden. And then I'll pull this upward. Again, press the corners, always press the corners. And I'm gonna bring it over to the back of the box. Now, a lot of people will go ahead and tape that right there, but I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna take that crease and use that as a fold line, bring it back, and that way I'm even with the box, which is really beautiful. Same thing over here. Press it down, make my crease trim. Press it back down, bring the flap up to the top, crease it, fold it back, press it down, and then add the tape. And as you can see, that looks really crisp. It has beautiful corners, beautiful edges, and it's ready to add the ribbon and topper. So for this box, I'm going to show you how to make invisible seams so it looks really professional. So we're gonna put this in the center. We'll want it to be centered for the width so you'll, you can sort of shake it into place. Now for this box, since I don't have enough paper, it's, it's a little bit shorter, I won't wanna put it all the way to the edge here. I'll actually pull it back and we'll start in the center of the back of the box. You don't have to go to the center, you could actually go closer to the edge, but don't go all the way to the edge for this seam. I'll add just a little bit of tape here to hold it onto the box. 
Same thing, I'm gonna really crease this and press it. And as I roll, I'll press it between my fingers. And just get that nice crease. Okay, and then we have this one flipping around the edge. And this is where you make that invisible seam. What you'll do is you'll take that fold, just like we did on the flaps of the last one. We're gonna put this back on the table. It'll be easier to fold onto the paper. And then you'll just press it right onto the table. And what's going to happen is this paper will hit right on the edge of the box. So I have my seam and it's right along the edge, right along the corner, but rather than using this tape, which will actually show and makes it not invisible, I'm going to use this double-sided tape. So I'll pull this back just a bit. Give myself, you can do a few of them along the edge. You don't have to do just one. Put that right along the edge, maybe a couple on the corners just to make it really secure. You can also get these in rolls that you can put on your tape dispenser and always have them handy. You might want to mark your dispensers and then just press that right down. And now we're going to work on the edges and make these invisible as well. So in this case, we're going to start the same where we will press that along inside until you feel it's all the way flat and then hit the corner. You can see this. Let me turn it this way so you can see it. So press it flat. Make sure this corner is nice and flat, and then press that down. We'll do it on both sides. First you go alongside the box, and then you press down the corner, and then you flatten. And we'll do the same on both sides. You notice that I have a flap up here, but we'll get to that in a minute. Sometimes if you have extra paper, it'll get a bit bulky, and you can always trim that down, but we're gonna just work with it right now. And make sure your paper doesn't get too bunchy. Okay, then we'll flip it over and go the other way. It's really important that you press this corner into itself so that everything stays really precise. And then you can just fold this extra flap over. Then we'll press this up. We're, we do have a little bit of an overhang, so I'm gonna fold it back maybe an inch. Press it down. I'm going to turn this over so I can see it. And then again, flip it back. And in this case, I will add my tape onto the flap, the double-sided tape. I'll put two pieces, one on each side. And very gently, there's the one side. Use my corner, flip it back. And there you have an invisible seam. You can see the seams on the edges and we'll end up covering that with a ribbon, but that looks so pretty and professionally wrapped and it's ready for a bow and a topper. So sometimes you might have a gift that's in a box something like this, and you're not gonna wanna put this in another box that's square so you can wrap it. So I'm gonna show you two different ways to wrap this type of tube gift. One of them is probably one that's incredibly obvious and you've probably done it before, but let's just do it anyway. So I have this tissue paper, and there's actually two layers of it because I want a softer paper for this. And I'm gonna place my roll. I'm gonna give probably about the width of the base, maybe a little less than the width of the base for the bottom. And I'm just gonna roll it. My, my lid is a little bit bulkier here, so you will see that it's not quite rolling even, but that's okay because this should work. All right, once that's around, we'll give it some tape on the side. And I'm using my gift wrapping tape or the invisible tape. It will still show. You can also use some washi tape if you want to. And then this is the bottom and all I'll do is I'll tuck this in and we'll go around. I'll do one tuck and then we'll keep going around and tuck, tuck. 
so that we get this nice and flat on the bottom. It might not be really flat, but it'll be flat enough. Since it's tissue paper and it's softer, you can crush it fairly easily. And we'll add some tape on the bottom to hold that and then turn it over. Now, this is the obvious part. I think I've seen this a bazillion times. The next thing you'll do is you'll actually just start bunching this at the top so that you make this little topper. And I don't have a string with me, but you would use a piece of twine or a piece of ribbon to tie that. So that's the first way. And then there's a second way that's similar to what I just did on the bottom. And that one I actually have a piece of gift wrap and you'll want to use a fairly lightweight gift wrap. You don't want a heavy gift wrap for this. Um, it will be a nightmare. And I've already cut it out. I cut it out enough that I have the full round and I have at least most of the sides. So you can see how that will fit. Now one of my edges has this jagged cut and one of it's pretty sloppy cut, which I just did a minute ago. So one of the edges I'm going to go ahead and fold back just so it's nice and clean. I don't want to put tape on this box because I think it's really pretty and I don't want to ruin it. So I'll just very carefully hold it as I wrap it around. And in this case, I will use my invisible tape because I don't want that to show on this really pretty, I think it's a rose gold metallic paper. Flip that back and just put the tape right on the edge and you'll want to get it to close to the edge as possible. Make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, here's the next part. Now, you might want to trim this down a bit because you don't want too much bulk and I think I will do that. I could have cut it a bit shorter. I just didn't want to undercut. It's easier to cut it down than make it longer once you've cut it. So let's see. I'm going to go ahead and cut about an inch off of this. So very carefully, I'll press that down and do a fold right on the seam. And then one little fold at a time, we'll bring that to the center. So we're kind of pleating, pleating the gift wrap around the gift. They'll try to make it as even as possible. You know, by the time we're done wrapping this, we'll probably have some sort of decoration on the top. So it won't really show, but still do it as even as possible. And then the last one is a little tight, so pull it out and then replace it. So for this top, I will use my regular tape. You can also use some hot glue or even a glue dot. And then we'll do the same thing on the bottom. First, I'll start with cutting off an inch. The last one. We'll put some tape on it, and that will be your bottom. Another thing you can do is put a nice little round sticker on the bottom to make it look really finished. But for this one, we are gonna put some decoration on the top. So these are actually ready to add the topper and the ribbon. Now this next technique is an oldie but goodie. I've done it so many times. In fact, I used this technique when I did Scotch Brand's Most Gifted Wrapper Contest, oh, I don't know, about six years ago, and I actually won with this technique. So it's worth it, right? I have some really cute little rock salts, and they're in blocks. And again, I could throw this in a gift bag, but I think I'd rather make my own so that it looks a little more special. So I have a piece of gift wrap here, and I have measured it out I've just gone the full height, so I'll cut that down when I need to. So I've measured it out so that it fits the width plus a little extra. I would say maybe an inch and a half, maybe two inches on each side, because I want them to sit just like that, stacked. So I open that up, and I'm going to figure out, I would say about center. I fold this over, and I, I do want to over, overlap this just a little bit. So I think one of the things that Scotch Brand did not have when I when I did this uh, for the contest was I didn't have this super hold tape, and this is really a lifesaver when you're making your own bags. This super hold and boxes, the super hold tape is really great because it does do what it says. And I'm going to want to put quite a bit of tape. I'm going to start on the bottom just to keep things holding. This won't show, and then I'll do a, a nice long strip up the seam. If you want to, you could attempt to do a hot glue on this, but I don't know, this just seems so much easier. 
I won't use all of this bag, so I'm not gonna tape it all the way to the top. Okay, so that's the first thing. Then, we're going to actually fold it up for the width of what we want the base to be. Again, I'm giving it just a bit extra on each side. I don't want it to be too tight. So this is how you measure it. Fold it up, give that a nice press. You can open it up from there and you'll want to match this fold along with the inside fold. So you'll really wanna poke that corner out. I don't know if you can see this here. So you can see this fold right here, I'm matching it right up with this line of the inside fold. And we'll just open that up like this and do the same thing to the other side. The other side's a lot more simple. Okay. Again, I'm gonna use this to measure. So that looks pretty good. And I will make my flaps about this, this wide so that I can have enough you want to make it even on the front and the back. So you want your flaps to be about the same. I want to make it wide enough for those blocks to fit right in. They smell really good. And I'm going to cover all the seams on the bottom with the tape because I do not want these to rip. If someone picks this up, we're going to put handles on it in the next section. But if someone picks it up and it rips, not such a good thing. So I put tape on both sides and both seams. So we have a nice big X of tape. Okay, I'm gonna fold that back down again. Now one of the tricks that you can do is take, you can see where this point is. You can actually take this side and fold it and that will give it a nice crisp edge. You don't have to do this. It just makes it look a little prettier. Do that on both sides. Okay, and then I'm going to open up the bag and decide how tall I want it. And I'll trim, trim off the top, because I don't need all this. As I'm sliding my hand down to the bottom, you can see it's coming out pretty nice. This back seam, the corners are flipped to the wrong direction, but that's easy enough. You can just use your finger and press it back the other way and then fold it. Okay. So my blocks look like they're about that tall. I think I want some flap and a little bit of a top that I'll fold over to add those straps. So I'll go ahead, just mark it with my scissors and then I'll fold it and then trim that right off. If you know the height of your bag ahead of time, maybe you make one or two of these so you know, you know exactly where you're going, you can actually fold this ahead of time so that everything's nice and tight. But I'm doing this on the fly, so I'm just kind of helping these things out just a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty nice. And then, I will go ahead and fold, let's see, make another crease, just to give myself a guide, and then I'm gonna fold this inside. You have to do it a little bit gentle, gentle so you don't wrinkle the bag too much. I find it works pretty good to start on the edges, and then the center, and then it all flips in. You can kind of crease that around the edge. I am going to add some ribbon in the next section, partly for decoration and also for a handle. But for now, the bag's ready, so I'll show you what I would do to prep this. Of course, you always want to start with tissue, right? I'll take this out when I add the ribbon, but I'm just gonna show you how I do it. I'm gonna fold the tissue paper over a couple times, so. I don't have quite so much. I don't want to cut the tissue paper down at this point. And I'm making a little pocket sack. You can see this. So then it will fit right into the bag. And then I'm going to open that up and drop my little bath salts inside. Very carefully drop them because I want them to stack. So there we go, this one is ready for some ribbon handles and we'll do that in the next section.
So what do you do if you have a really strangely shaped gift? You can always grab a gift bag and throw them in, but what fun is that, right? You wanna do it yourself. So I showed you earlier this cute little triangle box, and now I'm gonna show you how to make it. This box is actually perfect if you have, say, a pair of socks, or maybe some mittens or gloves, or something soft that can fit in here easily. And you, again, don't wanna put it in a box, you want something a little more fun. In this case, this is that little makeup bag. So this is such a simple way to make a box and this can be fun for the kids as well. And this is just a piece of cardstock and it actually has this glitter imprinted so it's fairly heavy. And all I'm going to do is fold it in half. It's a square and you'll want to press this down really hard so it's nice, it has a nice flat corner. Then I'm going to fold it into itself and do the same thing. You could almost use a bone folder or even a brayer for this so that you don't hurt your fingers too much. And then we'll do the same thing on this one. And I'm gonna use this to kind of make it even. So we have three folds and we have four sides. And the way you make that the triangle is simple. You just put two sides together. For this box, rather than using regular tape, I'm actually going to use this Scotch brand super hold because I really want it to stay together and also it's shiny and in this case is perfect because this cardstock is really quite shiny. And I'm going to put a nice long piece of this. I'm going to put it here right on the edge about halfway. Slide that together and then wrap it around to the back. And as it says it is strong. It is strong. I can't even pull it off once I got it on. I got a little bubble there but that's okay. We'll add some ribbon to this and you won't even see it. Then to get the sides to fold down, all we're going to do is make cuts. Now we want to make them even, so you might want to take, let's see here, I'm being innovative here. I'm just going to take a piece of scrap paper and I'm going to use this as my measurement and you want them to be about an inch to an inch and a half. So I'll use this as my ruler and I'll just hold that right onto the edge and cut each of the corners down to that spot. You can use any type of, you know, printed scrapbook paper, but you'll, you will want it to be a cardstock. You want it to be fairly heavy. And if this is, if your kids can use scissors, they need to use probably more of an adult scissor. They can use this as an idea to make, you know, their gift boxes as well. So all six of those are cut. Then I'm gonna simply, very gently, Fold this back now. I'm, I'm going to try and make it as straight as possible. Press that down. I'm, I'm pressing them outward first because that way they'll be ready to go the other direction. And this one has two, so I'll do one at a time. This would work really well if you have a personal cutting machine that does have a scoring tool because you can set it up to score all these ahead of time. Sometimes last minute gift wrapping, you don't have that. Okay, so all three of those are done. Then I'm going to cut at a 45 degree angle. All of these flaps. And I'm folding the flaps with two, the two flaps in first, and then adding the others. And then once that's done, I will use that really strong hold tape again. I think I got a little much there, I can trim it. Although I think I would like another piece right here just to keep it nice and tight. So there's the bottom of the box and we'll do the same thing with the top of the box. Cut at 45 degree angles. So now this box is ready to fill. Place the gift in. We'll go ahead and add that super tape to keep it shut. And then we're going to add some ribbon and some toppers. 